I've lived, you know, a life full of pain and I guess you can say it wasn't the prettiest life of just hospital rooms. My life is nowhere near what I thought it would be. And I have had my days where I absolutely hated that. I wanted my life to go the way I dreamed, but sometimes dreams change for a greater purpose. I feel like I now have a fire burning inside of me to make a difference and to have a positive impact on the lives of others. While you may be down now and feel like you are fighting a war, I am living proof that if you keep fighting, you can win the war. Dear Scleroderma, My name is Bailey Ann Schwartz. I am 22 years old. I am from a small town in Pennsylvania called Beach Lake. I just thought how perfect she was. I counted all her toes and her little fingers just like any other mom would do, and she was the apple of everybody's life. I have 15 nieces and nephews. I am the youngest of four siblings, so they each have their own little cluster of children. My childhood altogether was simple and very relaxed. I used to play dress up a lot and dance around the living room, pretending I was on Broadway. She wanted to be everything and anything that she could squeeze in, into her life. <laughs> I had dreams, well, as much as a six-year-old little girl could have, but you changed that. Then we started having a little bit of difficulty with her around uh, the age of six. We started noticing different little things. She just, it wasn't normal. You started off slow, not fully showing your existence, but you were very much alive. She was sick a lot and nobody, we didn't put two and two together. I got really sick and my mom was away. I had gotten a phone call in the evening that she had turned black while getting a bath. And I didn't understand, what do you mean she turned black? She, they're like, mom, she, her hands turned black, her feet turned black, her lips are black, mom. So they took her to the doctors. They said, we don't understand what it is she has, but we know what she has. Scleroderma, I was told I wasn't going to make it past the first five years with you. My parents were in disbelief, pure denial. What was the reason she got is she was a perfectly healthy baby when she was born. You just start beating yourself up, thinking that you're the reason why, because you have no understanding on it. I think I came to the conclusion that my life was never going to be the same. There is something seriously wrong, Mommy. What's wrong with me? I don't understand what's wrong with me. I quickly became this fragile little thing that at any moment could easily break in half. I cried all the time. I slept for eight years next, alongside of her on the floor. I was scared to death to leave her. This cute little girl was changing. She was changing right before my eyes and I couldn't do anything but watch her. I was no longer a kid in school. My new normal became being a kid in a hospital constantly. My face and hands were the first things that people started to notice were changing. That's when I started getting a lot of questions, but I always kept it very basic. <laughs> she was always in the hospital, uh, dealing with doctors and everything, so she couldn't really build a relationship with different friends and everything. And it, it, it hurt her. I had a feeding tube for seven years. Next came my lungs and then my heart. I received a year of chemotherapy, which failed and had a host of other medications and treatments that did not seem to make a difference. Even the hospitals up here, when I would take her in when she was sick, they're like, we're sorry, we, d we don't know anything about this disease. We can't really help you. Her classmates were really supportive, but then once they got into 
uh, seventh and eighth grade boyfriends became a big thing, so they kind of lost touch with Bailey Ann, so she became a loner. Once I hit middle school, I lost all my friends. I didn't have any friends whatsoever. And um, I developed anxiety at that point, because I just, I wanted to be like everybody else. She would tell me how she felt inside about having this, this illness. There were a lot of things that I could not answer for Bailey. A lot of questions about what her life was going to be like or would she ever find somebody that she could spend her life with. My lips became a straight line that was hard to close over my teeth and my cheeks became puffy and hard to squeeze. My hands became so tight I couldn't bend them due to the thickening skin. She looked at herself as being ugly at that time. I felt hopeless. You know, I felt like, what was the point of myself? You know, why am I even here? What draws me to photography is being able to capture a moment. I find a lot of peace and comfort in it. I've lived, you know, a life full of pain, and I guess you can say it wasn't the prettiest life of just hospital rooms. It's definitely a moment of peace, a moment of silence. Despite it all, she's still dreaming. My mom definitely quickly became my best friend because she was with me going to doctor's appointments and spending nights with me in the hospital. We learned to uh, find ways to humor one another. She always gave me the decision to have things in my control. So it was her way of allowing me to decide some things on my own. She keeps reminding me to stop beating myself up, that it wasn't my fault, it's just something that happened. In the middle of the night while everybody was sleeping and I knew she was okay, I would sneak away and I would just play my guitar. And that's what I poured myself into at the time. She told me outside the other day because I was crying because she was moving out. She says, you will always be my best, best friend. She says, but I have to do this. And I said, I know, I know you do. It doesn't make it any easier. Scleroderma. Did I think that when I was a little girl playing house or dress up that my life would become so frustratingly complicated? No. Did I think I would end up spending more time in hospital rooms than I would in school? Did I think I would almost end up dying twice? No. I wanted my life to go the way I dreamed, but sometimes dreams change for a greater purpose. Maybe like I was put on the earth for a reason. That mentality kind of is what made me start accepting myself as who I am. And I don't want people stuck where I was for so many years. If you go online, there is nothing but blogs for women over the age of 30 on scleroderma, and there is very few things that you can find on younger kids. I want to share my life and my experiences with the world. I want to impact the lives of children, especially those in the hospital. I want to give them hope and show them that while you may be down now and feel like you are fighting a war, I am living proof that if you keep fighting, you can win the war. Don't ever stop believing that miracles happen because Bailey wasn't even supposed to be here today. She's still alive. And I, I believe it, it's the grace of the Lord. It, it puts joy in my heart. I want her to keep going. Just because you have scleroderma doesn't mean that you are any less valuable than what people are telling you you are. You're not just a case study. 
you're someone so much more. Scleroderma is not what defines me. It's just helped shape me to who I am today. You are rare, scleroderma. Not as rare as you used to be, but rare nonetheless. Not many people are aware of your existence as you can be an invisible disease. I am committed to raising awareness so that scleroderma diagnosis can occur sooner, that patients can receive the life-saving care they need, and so that eventually we will find a cure.